Matthew 27, 50 and 51. You ready to read? Let's read together. It's up there. Everybody ready? Go. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the cotton of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook the rocks split. Somebody shout amen. amen. Your veil is also torn. Amen. The barricade between you and the glory is removed in Jesus name. Amen. Anything that's trying to hold you back from experiencing the fullness of God's presence. Today I pray it has taken out your life. I decree and I declare by reason of this word you have full access to the glory of his presence. You will not be left out. I say you will not be left out. You will walk in the fullness of his glory. Not part of his glory. Not partial, but fullness of his glory. May you walk in that dimension in Jesus' name. God, I'm trying. I say may you walk in that dimension in Jesus' name. Father, think through my mind and speak through my mouth. Let your people hear your word. In Jesus' name we prayed. Amen. Please be seated. We know that the death and resurrection of Jesus blazed a path to eternal life to everyone who believes. His death literally opened up a door. Can you get some lighting so it's a little bit visible in there, please? Amen. Amen. Thank you. But one of the things we have to realize and recognize about the death of Christ is that there were a lot of significant occurrences and happenings that went on together with his death. Now, I will not go enumerating. You just saw it says rocks split open and all that. I'm not going enumerating all of them, but I just want to dwell on this one. One of the key things that happened when Christ died is that the veil in the temple was torn. The veil was torn. Hallelujah. Can you put the light? I requested for it. I requested for that light so it can be visible in there. Thank you. Thank you. The veil was torn. Amen. Come on, amen. That veil was torn. Now, the purpose of the veil was that it protected and preserved the presence of God that was in the Holy of Holies. So that people would not somehow walk into that space. Why? It was dangerous for anybody to walk into that space. In fact, the easiest way to commit suicide is walk into that space because you will not survive. Nobody could walk into that space and leave if they were not authorized by God and if they had not carried out the required rituals that God required for them to carry out. The Bible tells us that only the chief high priest, the high priest had access to that glory and in fact he did not access the glory with excitement. Come on somebody. He never walked into the glory with excitement. In fact, when it was moment for the high priest to access that space, that dimension of God's glory, fear did not only come on him, fear comes upon the entire nation. Everybody becomes afraid because nobody knows if he walks into that space, would he come out alive? He could get in there and die. Why? Because the gloriousness of God's presence could not withstand the tiniest of iniquity. And so for the high priest to be able to walk into that space, he had to carry out all kinds of rituals. Cleansing himself, covering himself with all kinds of things that were prescribed by Moses. So that by the time he walks into that space, God will spare him. And if he walks in there and carries out the rituals and carries out an atonement on behalf of the, of the nation, 
and somehow he survives and comes out alive. There is such a cheer, there's such a joy, there's such a jubilation that God has spared not only the priest, but he has spared the nation for another year. So every year, they have to go back and seek for the same grace. Every year. But I came to tell you when Christ died on the cross, that veil that demarcated the presence of God's glory, the Bible says with that hands, it was torn from top to bottom. Because here's what God was announcing. Now I grant you access to my presence and you don't need to be afraid because you will not die, you will leave. Can I hear somebody shout amen right now? When you walk in that dimension of God's presence, you no longer come with your heart in your hands. You come now with excitement. That's why in the book of Hebrews, he said, come boldly. Are you hearing me, somebody? He said, come boldly. In the Old Testament, they didn't have that kind of boldness. But right now, aren't you glad you can boldly walk into the presence of God's glory without any fear of death instead when you come with death you get life am i talking to somebody right now it's a place where dead things receive life may you walk in that presence i wish i go back to nigeria may you walk in that presence I said, may you walk in that presence. 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 Lord, send me back to Nigeria. I'm trying. He said, I should bring him with me. He said, I should bring him back. May you walk in that presence. Glory to God. May you walk in that presence. Not the presence that kills, but the presence that gives life. May you walk in that presence. Hear me. When you step in that presence, instead of you dying, the things that speak dead to you, they will die. <laughs> Is somebody hearing what I'm saying now? Everything that was meant to kill you and destroy you dies and you leave. So in other words, if there was sickness, it doesn't survive the glory. Hey, I'm speaking to somebody. I'm trying hard. If there was sickness, it would not survive. If there was cancer, it would not survive. If there was diabetes, it would not survive. If there was a marrow problem, it would not survive. If there was a vein problem, it would not survive. If there was a headache problem, it would not survive. If there was a heart problem, it would not survive. If there was a BP problem, it would not survive. Everything dies and you leave to the glory of God. Somebody shout, yeah. presence you leave and everything dies I command sicknesses to die I command cancers to die I command every disease of the bone to die every disease of the blood I command it to die those things will perish but I command you to leave somebody shout I leave I leave in that presence you come alive in that presence you come alive your dreams come alive. Your purpose come alive. Your destiny comes alive. Your assignment comes alive. Your anointing comes alive. I'm calling everything that needs to live. Let it come to life in the name of Jesus Christ. Come alive. My God, I say come alive. I'm going to do what I do in Nigeria. I say come alive. I say come alive. Let your anointing come alive. Let the oil on your head come alive. Let the grace you carry come alive. Somebody say, come alive. Everything that was meant to kill you, it dies. And life is released on you. Somebody shout, I shall not die. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody shout, I shall not. Why are you still sitting down? Somebody shout, I shall not die. I said, somebody shout, I shall not die. I said, shout, I shall not die. I shall leave and declare the glory of God in the land of the living. Raise your hand and shout, yeah. yeah. I'm done preaching. 
I said I'm done preaching you live and you don't die I say you live and you don't die not in the glory of God no there is no sentence of death there is a sentence to life you have a life sentence on you to the glory of God the Father in the name of Jesus Christ 